This video is on solving exponential and logarithmic equations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each type of problem and a couple basic examples, a couple medium examples, and a couple difficult examples. So hopefully it should be very painless and very easy for me to explain this to you. All right, so first we're going to do exponential equations. One, you need logs to solve exponential equations. That's the idea that um, exponential equations are solved through logs, logarithmic equations are solved through exponential. Second, you must always isolate the exponential part first. That is the base and the exponent. So that base could be something as simple as 2 um, raised to the x, or it could be something a little bit more complicated like e raised to the x, or it could even be something like this where it's 3 raised to 2x minus 4. Regardless, this particular part, base and exponent, base and exponent, base and kind of a larger exponent, must all be isolated before you can apply any of your log rules. Be careful solving exponential equations with a quadratic feel to them. To solve these, you need to use a special process I call chunking. So we'll get to one of those a little bit later. All right, so here's a very basic one. We're trying to figure out 3 raised to what number equals 18. We know 3 squared is 9. We know 3 to the third is 27, but we have no idea how to generate 18. And this is where we use logs. We're going to just go ahead and basically use the definition of logs, and that says that log of I'm sorry, base 3 of 18 equals x. And there we go. That's our answer. Now, another way that some people teach us is to take the log of both sides. That's how it looks like this. What happens is you take the log of both sides, and what happens is that the x falls down in front. That's one of our properties that we've learned with exponents. So now that x falls down in front and we get log of 18 equals x times log of 3. We can then divide both sides by log of 3. And we get that x is equal to log of 18 divided by log of 3. Now, is that the same thing we got? Well, actually, it is. Because notice over here, I was using log base 10. Over here, this is log base 3. If I were to use my change of base rule, that would say take the log of 18 and divide it by the log of 3. And that, again, is log base 10. And that is equal to x, which is the exact same thing I got over here. So I think just using logs to help solve is very simple. But again, you get a base like 3, which we're not too familiar with, whereas we, do, we are familiar with the base of 10 on our calculator. So what happens is we can go to our calculator here and we could say log of 18, close that parenthesis, divided by log of 3, close that parenthesis, and we get our answer. I always like to check as well. I'll do 3 raised. And you can even go back and grab that answer up top. Um, let me put this in here. Here we go. And um, just do 2.6309. And, oh, sorry, I hit the wrong button there. My fault. And there we get the 17.999, which is, again, very close to 18. So either way you try to solve this, you do end up with the exact same answer. So if you left this as your final answer, and then you told me it was approximately whatever the decimal was, that's fine. Or if you left this as your final answer, I'm okay. It just depends if you use the change of base rule. All right, here's some medium problems. Once again, the 5 raised to 2x plus 3 is my exponential part. So I'm going to use log uh, base 5 of 7 equals 2x plus 3. Now just keep in mind that this here is one value, and I want to treat it as though, because now I need to subtract 3 and divide by 2. So I get log base 5 of 7 minus 3 all divided by 2 equals x. And there is my answer. Very, very nice and very, very simple. Um, just keep in mind that I like to use the brackets just so that you don't accidentally think that the 7 gets subtracted by 3. And some kids might say, oh, 7 minus 3 is 4. By no means, it's simply this right here, right? Now, remember, you could change this if you want to because I don't have a log base 5 button on my calculator. So to approximate this answer, I would have to do log base 10 of 7 divided by log base 10 of 5 minus 3 all divided by 2. Now, I know that's an even uglier answer, but that is how you would, that's how you would type it on your calculator to generate the approximate value for x. All right, here's another one with natural logs. There's my base of e, my exponent of 4x plus 2. So I'd say natural log of 92 equals 4x plus 2. 
plus 2. And natural log of 92 is nothing more than a number. I now need to subtract 2 and divide by 4. So I get the natural log of 92. And again, I like to use those brackets just to make sure we keep that number whole. Minus 2 all divided by 4. And that is equal to x. Now you can go to your calculator, type in natural log 92, minus 2, divide by 4, and you'll get your approximate decimal equivalent for that value. Okay? So hopefully those are very, very simple. Here's a slightly more difficult one. Notice that the exponential part, 3 raised to 2x minus 5, needs to be isolated first. So I now need to add 4 first, and I get 2 times 3 to the 2x minus 5. When I add 4, I get 15. And then now I'm going to divide both sides by the 2 in front to further get rid of this. So I get 3 raised to 2x minus 5 equals 15 halves. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply my log rule. I know that log base 3 of 15 halves equals 2x minus 5. And I now need to take this value, which is log base 3 of 15 halves, and I need to add 5 and divide by 2. So I get log base 3 of 15 halves. I'll add 5, and then all divided by 2, and that equals my x value. So hopefully that is very, very simple for you to do. But once again, just be aware, to get the approximate answer, I would need to be able to figure this out on my calculator, and I may need the change of base rule to do that. So keep that in mind when you go to use your calculator. All right, here's one more. Here is my exponential part. That is the e, the base, with the negative x minus 1 as my exponent. So I do need to do a little bit of solving here. So I get negative 4e to the negative x minus 1 equals negative 15. I brought that 15 over. Now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. So I get e raised to the negative, negative x minus 1. And I'm going to divide by 4 there. So I get 15 fourths. The negatives, of course, cancel out. So now I get the natural log of 15 fourths equals negative x minus 1. So again, this is nothing more than a number, the natural log of 15 fourths. I need to add 1 and divide by negative 1. So I get the natural log of 15 fourths, and I would take that value and add 1 and divide that all by a negative 1. And that basically dividing by negative 1 would run a negative through this. So I could just put a negative sign in front and then change that plus 1 to a minus 1. Now, the one thing I want to tell you to watch out for is be careful if a problem ever ends up like this. If you ever get 2 raised to the x, for example, equals negative 7, this will never, ever happen. This has no solution, okay? That is because 2 raised to any number in the world can never, ever be negative. It could be really small. You can make it a small, tiny fraction. You can make it really, really big if x is a big, positive value. But no matter what, it's never, ever going to be negative. And you could think about logs to have this make sense. Log base 2 of negative 7 equals x. This is impossible. This is a non-true statement. This is, does not exist. You can never, ever, ever have a negative number inside of a log. So that's another reason why if your exponential ends up equaling a negative, impossible to happen. So be careful if you try to get tricked and you see that happen as well. All right, here's this last kind that I call a special uh, quadratic feel problem. Now, if I look at this, I kind of get that quadratic feel where I don't only see one exponential part, but I see two exponential parts. I see base e raised to the 2x, base e raised to the x. Now, the trick to solve a problem like this that has this quadratic feel is, unfortunately, we need the factor because that's what you do with quadratics. So here's what I like to do. I like to do what's called chunking. So I'm going to take of my favorite letter in the world, m, for Mike, and um, I'm going to set that equal to e to the x. Now, when I come back to my problem, I'm going to replace the e to the x with an m. So this becomes m squared because the 2 is still there. Remember, I only replace e to the x with m. Over here, I have 3m. I replace e to the x with m plus 2. So this is called chunking because I took a chunk of the problem out and just called it m. Nice and easy. Now I could factor this. Everybody should know how to factor this problem. This is going to be m times m makes the m squared. I need a 1 and a 2 to generate the 2 in the back, but I need them both to be negative. That way I get a negative 3 in the middle. Now we know that m minus 1 could be 0 and m minus 2 could be 0. Well now we know that m could be 1 or m could be 2. Now I'm ready to put m back into the problem. Instead of writing m, I now need to go back to the original. e to the x could equal 1 
or e to the x could equal 2. This means that the natural log of 1 could be x, or the natural log of 2 could be x. So those become my two solutions to this problem. So just be careful when you have that quadratic feel. Think about chunking. You could use your favorite variable to represent that e to the x for the time being. Factor like you normally would, but just don't forget to go ahead and put that e to the x back in there and then solve exponentially just like we've been doing. Very, very simple. All right, so next up, let's look at solving some logarithmic equations. First, to solve logarithmic equations, we need exponents to help us solve them. But you must always first isolate the log part of the problem before any exponents can be applied. That could be as something as simple as log base 2 of x. That would need to be isolated. Log base 3 of um, uh, z, whatever variable you're using, that would need to be isolated. Or it could be a little bit more complicated, something like log of 2x minus 5 but that would need to be isolated before you could apply any kind of rules. Keep in mind, though, you can never, ever end up with a negative number inside of a log. So when you have a log or a natural log of any base, doesn't matter, the number inside right here, this value right here inside the log, must always be positive. And when I say value, I mean a number. The number must always be positive. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some basic problems with this. So here we have the log already been isolated, nice and simple, so we're just going to apply our rule, 3 to the 5 equals x, and we're done. Obviously, you could grab a calculator and figure out what 3 to the 5th is. It is 243, so there's my value for x, 243, nice and simple. Here's another one that looks a little bit more complicated, but again, the log is isolated, so I'm going to first apply my rule, my definition, 2 to the 3rd equals 3x minus 4. Everybody should know that 2 to the 3rd is 8, so 8 equals 3x minus 4, and now I'm going to go ahead and solve. I'm going to subtract 4, and I get 4. And I'm going to go ahead and divide by 3, and I get 4 thirds is x. There's my nice exact answer. Okay? Now, one thing you could do here to make sure that this makes sense to you is you could actually go ahead and um, plug the number in here for x. So once again, 2 to the third gave me 8. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And I added, f whoa, I made a huge mistake here. See, I went back and checked my work, and I realized that a big mistake was made. I, for I subtracted 4. I need to add 4 to both sides, giving me a 12. See, even I make mistakes sometimes. And then I divide by 3. I get a nice value of 4. Now, always go back and plug that back in, just to kind of make sure that you don't get a negative inside the log. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. Okay, I got an 8 inside there. Nothing wrong with having an 8. Just be careful. If you ever end up with a negative number inside that log, no solution. Doesn't work. All right, here's a little bit more difficult one. Now, this time the log is the natural log of x. I need to isolate that first, so I'm going to move the 5 over. So I get 2 natural log of x equals 4. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to actually move the 5 over. Boy, I'm making a lot of mistakes here today. So, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Now I'm going to divide by 2. The natural log of x equals negative 1 half. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my rule. e to the negative 1 half equals x. Now, just a couple math things. I don't really like having negative exponents, so I'd actually prefer to write this as e uh, 1 over e to the positive 1 half. And if you want to take a step further, you can even write that as 1 over the square root of e, because our 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of e, equals x. But nevertheless, that is your answer. Okay, that's a nice exact answer as well. You can use your calculator if you want to get a proximal decimal, but that's the exact answer. Here's a slightly more difficult one. Once again, here's the log part right here, the log part. So I need to isolate that first. I'm going to divide by 2. So I get log base 5 of 3x equals, well, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Hard to mess that up. Now I'm going to go ahead and just apply my rule. 5 squared equals 36. Everybody knows that 5 squared is 25. 25 equals 3x. I think I said 36 earlier. Sorry. 3x. Divide both sides by 3. And I get a final answer of 25 thirds. Nice and simple. Very, very easy as long as you apply the rules. 
If there's ever more than one log in the equation, no big deal. Use the properties that we've learned about logs to condense to a single log. Here's an example. Log 5x plus log of x minus 1 equals 2. Well, it's pretty hard to apply my rule to combine these two logs together. And we know that when you're adding logs, you can combine them with multiplication. So that's really one log of, now I know someone use brackets here, 5x times x minus 1 all equals 2. So I could take two logs and combine them together as long as I take the 5x and multiply it by the x minus 1. Now I can go ahead and use my rule. 10 raised to the 2, 10 raised to the second, equals 5x times x minus 1. Now I have nothing more than a simple equation to solve. Let's see if we could solve it. 100 equals 5x squared minus 5x. Hmm, this is a quadratic. Guess I need to get a 0 on this side. So 0 equals 5x squared minus 5x minus 100. All right, how do we solve quadratics? Well, we could factor, we could use a quadratic formula, or we could even complete the square. But let's go and try to factor this one. Could make my life a little bit easier if I first factor out a 5. And that's going to give me x squared minus x minus 20. Now I can go ahead and continue to factor. I get x minus 5 times x plus 4. That's a fairly simple factoring problem. And this means that x could be 5 or x could be negative 4. Now, I really highly stress in a problem like this, going back and plugging 5 in. If I plug 5 in, I get log of 25. Okay, log of 25, no problem. Plug in 5 over here. Log of 4, 5 minus 1 is 4, no problem. Okay, so it looks like 5 is going to end up working. How about negative 4? 5 times negative 4 is negative negative 20. Wait a minute. I cannot have a negative inside of a log. So that's going to be a major problem here. Same thing over here. Negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. I can't end up with a law, a negative inside of a log. So it looks like this is what we call an extraneous solution. It's a solution that we got through our solving technique, but it's not going to cause a solution that makes a real answer. So I'm going to ignore it. So be careful. Always check your numbers. All right, here's one final problem. Once again, with two logs, I'm going to need to go ahead and combine them together. Now, how do you combine with subtraction? Well, subtraction, you could take your two logs and put them together as long as you take x divided by x minus 1. So that is my value here. That is how I could take two logs with subtraction and bring them together. Equals 1 half. Now I'm just going to go ahead and use my rules. 4 to the 1 half equals x over x minus 1. Everybody knows 4 to the 1 half is the same thing as the square root of 4, which is 2. And now I just got to go ahead and solve this equation. Well, I could treat that 2 as 2 over 1 and cross multiply. So I get 2 times x minus 1 equals 1 times x as x. That gives me 2x minus 2 equals x. And let's see here. I can move my 2x over. So I'm going to come up over here. When I subtract 2x from both sides, I get negative 2 equals 1 minus 2x is negative x. Divide both sides by negative 1, and I get 2 equals x. Okay? Now, once again, let's go ahead and make sure that works. If I plug in a 2 here, I do get a log of 2, which is not a problem. 2 minus 1 is going to be a 1. That's not a problem. The key thing is there, when you plug x back inside of a log, you cannot have a negative number be generated. So it does look like this one will work out fine. All right, no problems here at all. Should be fairly simple and nice and easy for you. All right, that's it for solving logs and exponential equations. We'll do a whole bunch of practice with this in class.